G'day, we're in New Zealand, Central North Island, on Top Dressing Ops. Talk you through a load on what is a trickier airstrip to operate from. We're landing uphill, and the first tricky part about this strip is a tight turnaround. We've got to get as close as we can to the bin on our left to give us plenty of room to spin around hard right here. Try and miss the truck. My hopper lid's open and as the load starts to go in I'll go through all my checks. And this New Zealand built Cresco aircraft is capable of carrying 2.2 tonne payload. Though in this instance with this airstrip we've got 1.7 tonne on board. I'll show you why as we start our takeoff roll there. Close the lid, stir the porridge, start advancing our power. We roll downhill. Halfway down the strip here, those couple of trees you can see on the left, that's actually a fence line they've had removed. This is a, a farm first and foremost, and, and these paddocks are used when we're not flying off here. Just see us going through there. Need to be mindful of those gates. The other one is a fence off the end. We need to be airborne before that, obviously. <laughs> and keep climbing out as these trees keep getting bigger. At the same time, I want to lower my nose to get 100 knots keep our most efficient climb speed. I'm starting to veer left here because coming up here you can see there's a wire that actually strings right across the valley and I'm hugging the left side and I'm aiming to fly just over that, drag my wing over the top. It's easier to keep track of a pole than it is a wire. Once we're clear there I'm beginning a gentle turn we're going to head back up the valley on the other side and I'm doing the same as before, I'm, I'm actually aiming for the wing to go over top of the other pole and that allows me to keep it in sight for as long as possible. The King Country is notorious for wayward and oddly placed single phase wires. you really got to keep your wits about you. Here it goes there. Even the pole there is tricky enough to see and the wire is even harder still. Shortly be crossing overhead the airstrip. It's just under our nose, out of view. I've also just ran through our AB line. I'll highlight it there on our GPS screen. Typically, you'd be turning onto it, but in this case, we can't actually clear a couple of the hills, which are in the way. So we're going to keep climbing, and, and as you'll see now, we're going to scoot around the side of this hill. The rest of the blocks coming into view on the GPS screen, the green area is what we've already done. Going around the hillside and we'll start turning to intercept. The light's not too good on the light bar there, we can't quite see all the information. Here's our countdown, we're in the block, blue light's on, we are sewing. Now here we've got quite a climb to take on still, and 90 knots is my designated airspeed I don't want to go below. Uh, if I start getting below that I need to either start dumping my load or pull away from a climb. And that's all I'm doing here is managing my airspeed here. I'm trying to keep the nose down as best I can. If I can't then I'm bugging out to the left or dumping my load or both. We're all good. We're in the clear. End of the block. Shutting the doors. Drop the nose a bit more. Try and get our 100 knots. Keep the climb going bit of bush at the top of the block here. And just lining everything up visually and, and double checking on our light bars we come around for our second run. And we're up a lot higher there if you have a look at the altimeter, 2,000 feet. The airstrip's at 700 feet so we've just done a 1,300 foot climb. Good effort. And as we head downhill we're going to have to bring the power back quite a bit otherwise we're going to bust VNO. See the power is almost at idle there, we're at 140 knots there, over the fence, open the doors, blue lights are on. As soon as you start changing your pitch, you're up and down, coupled with changing power controls. There's a lot of fancy stuff that happens to your aircraft, gyroscopic precession and the like. Basically science. It's science. To keep a straight line, there's a, a lot of control inputs that are needed. A little bit trickier than, than what it looks. We're into the run there, our load is empty and to help get your bearings back you can see just in front of us here off to the left is the airstrip 
that might help put in perspective for you how well this aircraft performs climbing up 1300 feet that close to the airstrip with that greater load it's pretty impressive and we'll begin our left turn downwind now and we'll keep that turn going all the way to the ground pretty much doing a carry approach like they did in world war ii lining ourselves up visually adjusting where necessary i'm aiming to touch down around the point of the fences doing several thousand landings a year you're getting reasonably proficient at it start leveling off there see we're just coming through the fence flaring touchdown and roll on up to recap the tricky bits we've got our tight turnaround up here a narrow gap on the airstrip where the fence is taken down our fence off the end of the strip the high trees off the end of the strip and the wires crossing the valley. So long as you keep all of those in mind and fly in suitable conditions and carry an appropriate load, it's an enjoyable challenge to fly here. Should we do another load? Yeah, let's do another load. I'll answer a few questions you guys have asked in the comments of previous videos. Thanks for those, by the way. First question is, what are you applying and is that a golf course? Great questions. To answer the first, we're applying solid fertiliser. Majority of the time it's superphosphate, and that's to help the grass grow. That's so the stock have got more feed to eat, and it also helps hold the hills together. The second question, is that a golf course? No. So far, all the videos and photos I've put up are not of a golf course, though I have flown off one before which was quite interesting and fun. I'll have to dig out the photo and show you all. And we're airborne now, I'm trying to get my nose down as best I can to 100 knots. We'll start veering to the left towards our power pole. Next question, how come you guys sit on the right seat? Good question, I have been asked that quite a few times. We sit on the right seat in this model of Cresco because it's a dual control. There are two joysticks, but there's only one throttle quadrant which is in between the two seats against the dash and it's more ergonomic to have your right hand on the joystick your left on the power lever and dump so when you're typically flying that's where you want to be and to do that you need to be in the right seat there is a single seat version of this Cresco aircraft and that one you are sitting on the left side we've crossed back over our wires air strips just in front below us again and we're going to head around the hill once more. Craig asks, do all Crescos have the hydraulic hopper door? No, they don't. The standard door on the initial Cresco was manual lever. Works just like a handbrake, lever you shift up and down. The addition of a hydraulic hopper is something that's been added by a few other companies and one that I think is much more superior to use. I enjoy it. This aircraft I'm flying now is a manual hopper lever. As we turn on to our run. Next question, Gavin asks, what is a top dresser? This aircraft is a top dresser Gavin, probably more commonly known as a crop duster internationally. But in New Zealand here, I've always known them as a top dresser. And this is top dressing what I'm doing. You can call it crop dusting, crop spraying, dung dusting. Here in New Zealand, it's known as top dressing. If you check out our speed here, we're doing a lot better than our last run. We're 100 knots or greater, which is pretty good. We're skyrocketing up here. Rate of climb, 1,000 feet a minute. A little bit more. It's pretty impressive. End of the run. Close our doors. Start our turn. Got a little bit slower right at the top there. Next question. Is crop dusting pest control? Crop dusting or top dressing here is grass growing it's only helping things grow and that's it Alexi asks does anybody understand what he is trying to say good question Alexi I hope you can understand me now I do have a bit of an accent I am aware of that my vowels are slightly different to what most people hear I have added subtitles to all of my videos so hopefully that can help in the meantime but you can rest easy knowing it could be worse. I could have an Australian accent. <laughs> and as we head down on our second run now, our power's back at idle. 
gear speed trying to stay below 140. Doing a pretty good job of keeping on our AB line so far. And as we come towards the end of our run and start our approach to land, a couple of landing questions. Ryan asks, why no flap on landing? It's all personal preference on that. I was taught not to use flap because it can reduce your elevator authority. Certainly on the XL and the stretch fletches, the Walter conversions. And as well, the aircraft pulls up short enough as it is. I do use it on occasion if I'm on a short strip with a tailwind but I'll only use a couple of notches of flat and the same if I'm having to land with a partial load full flat. Now we're bringing ourselves around, keeping our turn onto finals, start leveling out, clearing touchdown. Final question asked by Martin, why did you not support the nose wheel after landing? I neutralize the stick, put the stick to neutral there, that's what I'm doing. It might look like I'm actually putting downward pressure, but it's not the case here. Uh, in some instances, I am purely based on the nose wheel shimmying. There is an issue with that sometimes. And that looks like that's us done and dusted. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hooroo!